Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be in Cap Haitian. Let's go. In this Haitian series, you've joined me in the slums, you've joined me on the beaches, you've joined me the party through the night, and now it's time to go to the streets. Here we go. The official sponsor of this video, or unofficial sponsor of this video, is Prestige. Prestige is definitely one of the better beers in the Caribbean. I recommend it 100%. It is the national beer of Haiti. If you haven't had it, you need to try it. So here I am in Cap Haitian. Cap Haitian was actually the original capital of Haiti. And you can still see the colonial era charm here in the city. It's actually of the two major cities here on the island, the nicer one. See, at the current time, Port-au-Prince is kind of in a state of war. You have gangs in the same city in Port-au-Prince fighting against each other and also fighting against the government. Things are rough. Things are not all pieces and cream here. However, it's a lot better. Haiti was the first republic from freed Africans. Not freed, actually Africans that fought for their freedom and won it. It was in front of this cathedral that jubilant crowds of former slaves celebrated their emancipation. For the nation of Haiti, freedom would come at a great price. Outside of the quarter million that lay dead, in the end, under constant threat of invasion from the French, Haitian President Jean Boyer agreed to pay the French 150 million gold francs. This independence debt would lead to a perpetual state of instability and would stymie the growth of the Haitian economy for generations to come. I tell you what, in recent videos you should have seen me in Cuba and even though Haiti is economically hurt, very clearly, I see more privatization here in Haiti than there is in Cuba. Due to the lack of public sector employment as well as private industry, many Haitians rely on self-employment in order to make ends meet. This gentleman sells peeled sugarcane for about one-sixth or one-fifth of what the price is on the streets of New York City. How is this? It's good. It's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chris, how it tastes? Hmm? How does it taste? Cane juice is not just a Haitian thing. Across the Caribbean, people love cane juice. You know, generally cane juice has sort of a, a light green tinge to it, sort of flared a green tinge, but this one is brown. It's really awesome. It tastes like they might have sprinkled a little coke in there. It's lit. And as soon as I mention the C word, the boys show up. I don't know about you guys, but since I grew up in New York City during the era of stop and frisk, I always get a little bit nervous whenever I'm around cops. Here in the sun-soaked markets of Cap, super friendly vendors sell their items to passerby. Huh? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. The markets here are hot, real hot. I'm not gonna front, I'm a little hungry right now. <laughs> 
let's go get this food. I was starving, so I really had to get in this. As I tear up this fried food, I want to tell you guys a story. It'll make clear why I have issues eating goat, a meat source that's very popular in Haitian cuisine. At the age of about five in Jamaica, I had a pet goat. I affectionately referred to him as Goti. He liked to be petted, and he also liked to run with me in the pastures. And then one day, we hopped in my grandfather's truck and drove off to my cousin's house. I saw them take Goatee away with a rope around his neck, but nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Then a few moments later, I heard Goatee scream. They had killed my friend. I watched in horror as he bled out. And just like that, for 23 years, I refused to eat goat. But since I'm over that now, let me explain to you that the goat in this pate is amazing. This pate packs some serious flavor. Although, I'm sure you all can confirm, when you're hungry, everything tastes like filet mignon. So this little thing here, it's very, very similar to the codfish fritter, um, or I guess we just call it fritters in Jamaica. And in Puerto Rico, they have one that's flat, and they call it bacalaito. It's very, very similar in taste to the bacalaito. A little bit more doughy, though. Just like other nations in the Caribbean, Haiti's economic and political turmoil has led to many skilled professionals to leave for other nations. You guys to meet the island sanitation team. The actions of some kids selling gum on the streets would let me know that I looked out of place here, even with the camera out of sight. It was very clear to them that I was not a local. Because of this island's complicated history, its legacy of slavery, colorism, and all the things that went along with that. Skin color is often seen as uh, associated with privilege, right? And this is the first time, maybe in a little while, that I felt like I'm, I'm being sort of um, noticed for the difference in how I look. And I think that's related to skin tone. And there's a, the idea that, you know, maybe I'm a privileged person, I don't know. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching this video and this series. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.